The following interview was conducted with Donald C. King, Professor Emeritus of Organizational Behavior and Human Resource Management for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Tuesday, December 7, 2010, Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome and good afternoon, and thank you very much for allowing us to have this little conversation. Um, tell us a little bit about where and when you were born and your parents and early years, grade school. Okay, I was born in uh, October the 8th, 1930, so I'm 80 years old now, uh -huh. um, on a farm in uh, Noble County, Indiana, up in northeastern Indiana. I uh, can say I'm a real northerner because I was born at home in a uh, northern county, northern township on the northern side of the uh, on the house that was on the northern side of the farm and a, a room that was on the northern side of the house. You were the so, northern person, right? Yeah, very <laughs> much a northern, uh, uh, northern person. Uh, and uh, my uh, dad was a farmer and a uh, trucker. And my um, mother, at, at when I was young, was a, uh, a uh, homemaker. Mm -hmm. my dad was killed in uh, Chicago. I uh, was hit by a... Uh, a truck while he, or by a car while he was uh, driving a truck when I was eight years old. Oh dear. In fact, first time I ever went to Chicago was uh, when I was eight. Uh huh. Uh, I went to the inquest at a uh, uh, police station where they were firing guns, practicing guns. It was uh, a, a rather scary, very different kind of kind of experience. Um, just to go, kind of go out of line, uh, out of out of order here. Go ahead. Uh, when I was um, young, that was really about as far as I until mm -hmm. I was a senior in high school, and we took a senior trip to Washington D.C. Well, how about that? To I'd been to uh, up into Michigan and uh, uh, over in Illinois, and that was uh, was about it. Uh huh. So I was really very uh, clear. Now I've. Uh, I have not been to Antarctica, but I've spent time in all the, the other uh, continents. So I went from being uh, uh, very, very uh, centered around my home to uh, having been and seen a lot, uh, sure. a lot more places. You went to the. You had a global reach. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about grade school and high school? Let's tell us about that. Well, I went to York uh, Township mm -hmm. Grade School, which was a school that. Uh, there were four teachers for the uh, eighth uh, eighth grade. Mm -hmm. I skipped the grade when I was uh, was there. Uh, <laughs> you probably you may not want to include this. Well, my, no, that's fine. Go ahead. First and, and second grade teacher was Ruth Buffen, uh, Buffenbarger, who's the first uh, cousin of mine. She's a sister of Ruth Butts. Ruth Butts and uh, er, of Earl Butts. Earl and I are first our first cousins. Is that right? Wow, yeah. what a small world. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, I remember my mother sent me to uh, school one day when I was either in the first or second grade uh, in overhauls, but the button was missing on the on the front of the overhaul, so she put a big safety pin in uh, in it. Uh, I had to go to the bathroom, so I, I went down to the hall to the bathroom, and I could not get the safety pin undone. Oh dear! So and so I wet my pants, mm. and I came back to the door of our classroom. I knocked on on the door, I was crying, and my uh, uh, Ruth uh, Buffenbarger came out and said, oh, that's too bad. She somehow got someone else to take care of the uh, kid, took me home, <laughs> and, <laughs> and brought me back. I always, always thought that was something that was very nice of her. They were right, at the right time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, this was a, uh, was a small school. I went to... Uh, Albion High School that was back at the, before the uh, uh, the centralization, the consolidation of, of high school. Uh -huh. um, was a jock. I was very active in all kinds of, uh, of athletics. Uh, and uh, what sort of t course were you taking? Were you in college prep or? Oh, they didn't have such a thing. Oh, okay. You just took, <laughs> you just whatever took, was there, right? You took whatever, whatever sure. was there. Okay. Uh, Interesting. There were only 42 people in our um, uh, graduating class. I uh -huh. was the um, valedictorian and wound up getting a PhD. The salutatorian, uh, Wilfred Brill, also got a PhD in physics at uh, 
at Purdue. As a matter of fact, he, it took him quite a long while. He had a lot of problems with his dissertation. Huh. I was an assistant dean of the graduate school at Purdue when he got his uh, PhD. I was able to look at his uh, at his papers. Oh my! For for a small country uh, school, at that time, they were, we did pretty well in terms of it. And there are a number of other sure. uh, classmates that uh, did well uh, educationally also. Mm -hmm. And then did you? And it was next college for you? Yep. Okay. Yep. How'd you happen to select Purdue? Well, uh, no, uh, no one in my family had gone to uh, uh, college. All the uh, uh, people in, maybe Ruth may not have gone to Purdue, but at least four of the family in my uh, uh, uncle uh, Herman's family, including Earl uh, and Verlo Butts and Marie and Dale Butts, all had gone to Purdue. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't have a lot of... <laughs> I had no <laughs> idea about what different schools were like. I, I had some uh, uh, scholarship offers at different schools, but really the only only school that I'd ever had any, any real contact with so uh, Purdue. With, was Purdue. And okay. So I wound up going to Purdue. Okay. This was in 1948. Uh -huh. uh, at that time, the ratio of uh, men to women at uh, Purdue was about six to one. Wow. About six men to, uh, uh, for one woman. Uh -huh. I remember the orientation, and you know, now they're very concerned about uh, student retention and keeping, keeping people in school and they're getting degrees. Sure. I remember at orientation in this big hall of music, which was really, that looked very, very big to me, particularly at that time. Yeah. Uh, one of the uh, speakers said, look to your right and look to your left one of you three will not be here after this semester. Mm. Uh, it was really much more of a <laughs> we're, we're tough. That's a wake-up call for sure. We're tough, scare kind of uh, tactic. First semester I uh, was in college, I lived with 11 other uh, uh, students, uh, male students, in the basement of a house on, in West Lafayette that uh, the lady had converted to uh, for rooms because housing was really very tight. And then second semester, I lived in the attic of uh, Cary Hall Northwest. Oh my gosh! There was a big. There was. It was a dorm. Uh huh. They had about oh, there were forty or fifty students. You know, with cots laid out, uh, <laughs> and uh, that was just because there just weren't that many uh, places to stay. And then this, the second year, I actually got a, a room and a roommate. Okay. Did you stay in Cary Quad the whole time? Or? Stayed in Cary Quad, yeah. Okay. Uh, I was a waiter uh, at Cary Hall, not very well liked by the administration. I was considered to be too talkative and too uppity, but uh, I was was a waiter. When I was a senior, the guy who was the head of the uh, uh, our unit, there was a faculty advisor in the unit. One thing I remember is, I was uh, the senior with the uh, highest uh, uh, index, uh, mm -hmm. grade point index, mm -hmm. the one gradu graduating. Yeah. And apparently the guy who uh, was the manager of all the halls said, isn't there anybody who's got a higher index than that? <laughs> <laughs> he did not, did not like it that I was, was, was going to be the uh, uh, person who got, uh, got that uh, recognition. Okay. So I, you know, I had my... What was your What was your course of study while you were uh, when? Uh, uh, psychology, industrial psychology. Okay. And I got my master's degree. In, Did you just uh, you, then you stayed on, didn't you? I then. Stayed on. Yeah. Okay. I got my master's degree worked with uh, in experimental psychology, uh, mm -hmm. and then got my PhD in industrial psychology with uh, Chuck Lashey. Chuck, oh, okay. You know, Chuck became uh, was a vice president for. Uh, regional campuses then after he uh, was a very right. good mentor. Um, we had a, uh, uh, I did my uh, research in uh, of the International Harvest Plant in uh, uh, Louisville, Kentucky, where uh, Chuck was a consultant. So we got to spend a lot of time together and I got a, got a taste of, uh, of business education. Mm -hmm. And then, <laughs> Uh, another unlikely thing, they had just were starting the uh, uh, master's uh, the master's program in management. It was called the MSI program oh. at the time. Okay. And they needed a, uh, 
someone to teach the uh, organizational behavior course. I was still working on, uh, still finishing my PhD, and I was asked if I wanted to do that, which is it's unusual that I stayed on at uh, Purdue and uh, that I uh, uh, got that opportunity. And while I was the, uh, the dean of the school, so I was one of the uh, founding members of that of that uh, uh, program. Okay. At that time, it, we were very careful about calling our degree. Uh, it was a, a Master of Science in Industrial Administration. Mm -hmm. It was a very intensive one-year program. We wanted to make it look like it was very different from the M MBA because uh, Indiana had uh, Indiana University had been offering an MBA mm -hmm. for a long while and had a, had a very good MBA program. And there was a lot of concern about duplication. You know, if they, if uh, Indiana has a program, then we can't have a program. Mm -hmm. They have a medical school, so we can't have a medical school. Right. Although you might not know that Purdue did have a medical school at one time. At one time, that's right. I know that. Yeah. All right. Uh, but you know, we tried to keep things separate and make things look very, uh, uh, very different. And one of the advantages of that, and I think at our in the uh, Granite School, we still have an excellent uh, reputation in uh, operations management mm -hmm. and uh, in uh, in that that sort of thing. And I think that got started early, and we got a lot of good uh, faculty uh, faculty members there. But one of the things I remember, the first class, uh, uh, MSIA class, uh, consisted of 33 white males, all, wow. all men, all white, huh. 33 of them, almost all uh, Purdue engineers uh -huh. who, who were coming back. This is for the MSIA program? Yeah, it's okay. for the MSIA program. Okay. The, uh, the, their average age was 29, and I was 25 at the time. Oh, my gosh. And so in class, I uh, really tried to steer clear of anything that had to do with experience. <laughs> right. And I hear you. I really, I reversed it by the end of my career. I was just the opposite. I remember the, I think the last semester I taught, and, and that was, again, in the uh, course in the master's program. Uh -huh. I, uh, I, I told the class that if uh, they liked uh, someone who told a lot of war stories, uh, we'd get along real well. And if they didn't, we'd probably have trouble because <laughs> I was telling all kinds of stories about things, mm. uh, things that had happened and things that I'd, things that I'd seen. Uh, my initial appointment was to join employment in the current school and in the uh, uh, psychology department. And oh, I okay. decided that uh, I would move over completely in the uh, uh, into the uh, Cranard School. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. A uh, very good uh, mentoring. I would think it was. I was fortunate in that it was a small program. M. Weiler, who was the founding dean, was an outstanding guy. Very inclusive person, uh, and he liked different ideas. He liked faculty members that were different and approaches to education that were di were different. Mm -hmm. And John Day, who was the associate dean, and became dean, really kind of took me under his uh, his wing. We jointly taught a, uh, a course, a case course, at, uh, which students uh, had to uh, write analysis of uh, uh, case situations which were presented for sure. them. And okay. I had a ch real good chance to get his view on a lot of uh, areas of, of management. Mm -hmm. But it was just a, uh, it, was, uh, it was very good. Uh, very good start, very good experience. Okay, so that's early on. Okay. Then in, uh, what do I want to talk about next? I do you want to talk about your research focus, perhaps, with that? I was, uh, okay. uh, you know, I'm interested in the, the area of organizational uh, behavior mm -hmm. and leadership. I was a uh, uh, person who always uh, felt that uh, uh, there was not enough uh, opportunities and not enough and not enough expected of non-managerial people. The old idea that there are there are there are doers and thinkers or planners, I thought was just uh, an idea that his time, if he ever did have a time, it, it was long gone mm -hmm. uh, since then. And so most of the research that I did had had to do with uh, ways of 
involving uh, people in the uh, decision making uh, process. Also, a lot of consulting I did. Uh, uh -huh. It's also the uh, also had that focus. Okay. Matter of fact, early on, uh, I gave a talk to a group. Uh, I had thought about this to a group of uh, people in Illinois, some kind of management uh, group. I was probably I'd been a professor for two or three years and. Uh, Chuck, when I got back, Chuck Lawshey, who had been my major professor for my PhD, said, said well, how did that, how did that go, Don? Uh, and I said, well, I guess it went okay. I, uh, so I was not just wondering. Uh, when I, that he told me several years later that someone, one of the, the managers, had called the president of Purdue and was just mad as hell because this young punk is telling us that we're <laughs> that we are, are too autocratic and we don't involve people. And what is he, where does he get talking like that? And, and so uh, uh, the president asked Chuck, well, well, what about that? And he says, well, I don't know that guy, but I know Don King very well. And I, <laughs> I believe what he said makes sense, mm -hmm. which is, was another nice support that I got that I said, I never sure. thought of the time. Right, yeah. Uh, what was the school like um, in the when you first came in the fifties and sixties? Oh it, well, it was small. And you uh, were in the was the Cranford building, building built at that time? Oh no, no, the Cranford oh. Cran building was built in uh, I think it was finished in uh, uh, 1964. Oh okay. We had, we had a the, for the first year or two, we had an inside room in what was then called Stanley Calder uh, Calder Annex which is where the psych department was located. Sure. They, they had redone the room so that it was like the rooms that you see now. It's, uh, you know, everybody can see everybody else. Uh -huh. here. And, that, and then we moved, when the classes got a little larger, down to the first floor of that building at the, uh, uh, I guess it would be the north side of the building, right where the trains came in. To okay. The, to park. I remember that. And so we'd be meeting, and here comes the train going right by by the door. So that was the uh, those, those were that was our early days. Uh, uh -huh. M did a terrific job in getting uh, support from uh, Herman Craner for the uh, you know for building the uh, the uh, Craner building the school. Right. Um, um, three of us, and, and again, that was something a lot of people were involved in. Vern uh -huh. Smith, who was on the faculty in economics at the time and is a uh, uh, Nobel laureate now. Oh, okay. Uh, and I were involved in the design of a uh, behavioral laboratory. He's, a, he's an experimental economist uh, that was on the seventh floor of that, uh, uh, of that building. Okay. Uh, I go around the country, look at what people were doing, come up with, uh, come up with ideas. But a lot of people were, you know, had, had their, uh, their uh, hand in in affairs at that time. All right. A lot of input. Yeah, a lot of input. Mm -hmm. um, we had uh, really no departments. You know, the uh, there's now a department of management and a department of economics, but there were no departments at that time. Oh, okay. We it was just one school, just one? Yeah, we okay. had what were called policy committee chairman, which is a rotating kind of position. These guys handled some of the administrative uh, details, but other than that, it was just hmm. pretty much everybody is uh, uh, involved. Very, very different than the uh, uh, city. We were much smaller, of course, so we sure. could do that. Right. But it was a good place to uh, 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 to work. Uh, good. What committee would you serve on? Any school or university committees? Oh yeah. Well, a lot. <laughs> any particular any particular one that you want to? Were you on the Senate at any time? I was on the Senate for a couple of years. Okay. The, the committee that was the most interesting was uh, was a committee that uh, uh, President Hubby uh, formed uh, during probably in 1968 or 1969 in, in, during uh, uh, the Vietnam, uh, Vietnam War. Right. When students at Purdue actually started becoming uh, very concerned about what was happening. You know, there was a joke at the time that uh, uh, Purdue was a hotbed of student rest rather than unrest. Okay. But they, particularly there was an editor of the Exponent. At that time, the Exponent was associated with the, uh, with the uh, university. It was not an independent newspaper. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was 
very critical of the war, very critical of the university administration. Uh, and a lot of people are saying, what are you letting these guys say and do? What is this? Uh, there's a lot of scatological uh, uh, stuff going on. And so uh, uh, President Hoveney appointed a, uh, a five-person committee, a guy by the name of Schumann, who was, uh, so he was one of the guys, a person by the name of Fuller and myself and two other people were on the committee, and our job was to offer advice as to uh, uh, what should be done about people who are occupying uh, rooms in the administration and uh, people who are preventing uh, 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 military recruiters from coming on campus and all kinds. And it was very different for Purdue because we were not used to having that kind of uh, sure. uh, uh, reaction. And one of the consequences of that was the fact that the Exeter became an independent. <laughs> okay. So you, get, you could say, well, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's their, uh, they're doing what they think they ought to do. But that was a very interesting committee. I, I enjoyed that uh, mm -hmm. uh, committee. I was an assistant dean of the graduate school. Uh, I was going to ask when about it, your administrative post, assistant. Yeah, when uh, E.C. Young was the uh, uh, dean. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, that was a good that was a good experience. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> on one occasion, there was a person working on a uh, d having a uh, defense of their doctoral dissertation in one of the uh, de departments in the School of Agriculture, and it was a, a behavioral kind of thing where they was it was they were uh, it was some type of animal experiment. I looked at the dissertation, and there was no reference. There's a long history in um, psychology, I'm sure you know, of, uh, of animal experimentation. Mm -hmm. And there was no mention to any or reference to any of this literature. And so I pointed myself as an additional uh, member of the uh, uh, this committee for, for the defense of his dissertation. And, and uh, you know, no one liked that. <laughs> that was involved in that. And one of the things that I uh, remember doing, this was, I forget the, it was one of the buildings on the south side of State Street. As I either went in or went out of the building, I walked into the door because I was nervous about Oh, my goodness. <laughs> about me. Fortunately, I looked around, and fortunately, there was no one around that saw me. But, <laughs> but that, was a, uh, that was something that most wasn't done very uh, very often. No, I wouldn't uh, think so. The most, uh, well, I also was director of the uh, our master's program. That that was during the uh, 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 Vietnamese War, right? Right, 68 to 71. 68 to 71. Okay. We had a very strict dress code. Uh, everyone wore uh, ties, suit, uh, coat and ties. Does this mean the t the faculty or the students? Students and oh. faculty. Okay. Uh, and given the uh, views of the time, that became very popular, particularly with the with the students. So uh, while I was, uh, uh, one of the things that I did while I was uh, directing the program was we relaxed the dress code so people did not have to uh, sure. uh, dress as they, uh, as, as, they, as they once did. Uh, the most meaningful administrative job I had was the uh, was when I was associate dean of the school. Good, I was going to, yeah, that was on my list too. Okay. Uh, and that, we had good, uh, very good uh, team, I, uh, I thought. And Ron Dennis, Dennis Wiedenauer was the associate as well at the same yeah, time. Yeah, uh -huh. and I were the two associate deans. Okay. And, uh, Ron Frank was the dean, and uh, we shared, uh, uh, Danny was kind of the external associate dean, and I was the internal associate dean. Uh, and we, I think we got a lot accomplished. I think we helped the school a lot. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it was a, it was a different kind of job, particularly for someone like me that had spent their whole career, in uh, you know, in one place. It was sure. good for me to uh, uh, get involved in some different, uh, different things. Right. I'll tell you one <laughs> incident from that time. One of the things that I did was uh, to uh, talk with faculty members after they had been reviewed for uh, promotion and tenure. Mm -hmm. It was my it was my job to, 
talk with him and end of one on one. Yeah, one on okay. one. Okay, okay. And we had one uh, young faculty member, assistant professor, who was in an area where we were very sure we just had no senior people in the area, uh, which meant that he'd had a lot of responsibilities, which he really shouldn't have had as an assistant professor if he was going to, uh, particularly if he was going to uh, get any research done. And he was not the most dynamic teacher. He was, I'd say, an adequate teacher, but he also had all these other things that were, were required of him. And the faculty decided not to give him a uh, tenure. About at, while I was at uh, Cranard, about 50% of the people that came up for tenure got it, and 50% didn't. I don't okay. know whether that's still the case or not, but okay. that was the case then. Mm -hmm. And um, I really felt badly for him because I felt that, uh, you know, compared with other uh, uh, assistant professors who were in areas where they had uh, good senior uh, uh, faculty members to mentor them and to, uh, take care of a lot of the uh, uh, administrative things that. Uh, uh, needed to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. He was really was in a you know, was in a tough position. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I could see that if you just took, if you took a look at his uh, what he had done from a research point of view and the quality of his teaching, I could see why uh, uh, it was a fairly close vote. But why the faculty decided they just would not offer him tenure. Well, mm -hmm. this is what I've been getting to is afterwards a full professor. Uh, in management, uh, stopped, stopped me and he said, have you talked to John yet? And I said, yeah, I've talked with him. And he, and he said, did he cry? And I said, no, he didn't, but I did. And that happened. <laughs> I thought this poor guy. Mm -hmm. I was sitting there across from me and I felt very badly for him and the tears started coming out. That can happen. <laughs> and the, the guy the uh, the guy who asked the question, I thought that was a very unusual question for anyone to ask. Yeah. The guy who asked it said it was really shocked. Yeah. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> mm. And then after you returned to teaching, right? Yeah. After that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about some of your synergic. How about some of your the consulting and also the Iran Iran uh, Ministry of, of Energy? Some of the things you did there. Yeah. Okay. I was uh, I consulted with a number of uh, organizations, primarily organizations that were trying to become uh, well. I guess you could say more democratic, more participating. Okay. Uh, including the uh, steel plant in uh, Lafayette and the. Uh, uh, General Foods Plant in uh, Topeka, okay. uh, Kansas, which was one of the early, it, it was written up a lot in a lot of different places as a, an example of a uh, uh, plant that was uh, operating on a, in a much different uh, way where uh, a lot more was expected of people, but uh, people had a, a lot more opportunity to really develop and shine. And I like doing that, and I, I kind of got a reputation of, as being someone who uh, had some ideas in that area. So mm -hmm. I did a lot of uh, uh, did a lot of consulting like that. Uh, the uh, I spent a year. What the most interesting outside thing I did was I spent a, a year. I took leave and uh, spent a year as a uh, with the Ford Foundation in uh, Egypt. Okay. With their whole family, uh, whole family going, and that was a very interesting year. That was with the organization called the National Institute of Management Development, that had about thirty Egyptian PhDs on the uh, on the staff, and uh -huh. they did they did <coughs> they provided training programs for managers. They did organizational research, and they provided consulting services for uh, Egyptian organizations. In that country, about everything, almost everything, is part of the public sector. So these were all kind of public sector jobs. And that was a very interesting experience for interesting experience for everyone, including mm -hmm. all the members of my family, who ranged all the way from our youngest son, who was in uh, kindergarten, to our daughter, who was in, in the uh, uh, eighth grade. At the time. Oh, okay, good experience. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah different. You know, when I was when you sent that thing and you were listing a lot of the companies. Some uh, I recognized a lot of the names, but you know I used to know so many of them. But now with a lot of the changes and everything and yeah. consolidation, you just don't know. There, you know, 
not all the same. <laughs> yeah, I know, you're right. <laughs> executive <laughs> executive ac uh, ac education activities, do you want to talk, uh, make a couple comments on that? On I, Air I did a lot of that over the years. I was involved, uh, I was a uh, uh, member of what was called uh, the National Training Laboratories. Oh, okay. We conducted uh, programs for managers. I must have done 30 or 40 of those. Was this a national organization? Yeah. Oh, okay. And I uh, did a lot of other, uh, uh, or did quite a lot uh, of things on my own, also quite a few things at, uh, at Purdue. I was involved in a program that we had with uh, Blue Cross, a national program with Blue Cross and Blue Shield oh. that we ran at Purdue for, oh goodness, it must have been 40 times. Hmm. Over they the would come here on campus? Yeah. Okay. And had other programs of the yeah. Uh, and I, I, again, just things I'm thinking of out of the book. R.R. Uh, Donnelly, uh, you know, the printing, you know, R.R. Donnelly. Sure. They had a, uh, for, they had a uh, program at, uh, with our school for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And I went in one day, and the class, the people in the class, men in the class, are obviously just really all looking sad and depressed. Oh, dear. And what had happened is that the senior person in the management information system, a guy with a national, very good national reputation, had uh, preceded me and had some class before me. And he told them that uh, you know, the printing industry in the printed word was a dinosaur. And uh, there'd be no company and they'd have no work of this kind in the next, it, within 10 years. Oh my God. So, well, I think he was a little short at the time, but there's, uh, you know, there's, <laughs> but it, it was quite a challenge there uh, trying to get these guys to uh, get back, get back in gear and, instead of feeling sorry for them. Sure. Yeah. One of the programs I noticed on that little uh, your beta that you sent to me, you were in South Africa. Yeah. So Tell, I, can make it. Well, how does how was how did that go? That was uh, that was interesting. I was involved in the uh, there was an executive. Uh, MBA program that the University of Stellenbosch uh -huh. uh, ran. I, I, this was back uh, in the days of apartheid, about two or three days before uh, the big uh, change in government. Oh, okay. Uh, but the uh, the class was an integrated. I would not have gone had it been an all you know white uh, mm -hmm. class. But it was an integrated class. There were uh, there were blacks. And, and uh, uh, people of Asian descent that were uh, in the class. So it was, you know, it was more enlightened in that regard. Mm -hmm. But the, one of the things that I, I remember was that uh, uh, when we were uh, talking with uh, some of the people, uh, some of the faculty members at the <coughs> university, uh, I was there and they said, well, now that you're here, I'm sure you realize why things have to be the way they are. Mm. Uh, they thought they were going to changing just as rapidly as they as they could. You know, there wasn't anything else they could do. And my response to that was that uh, if their uh, sons and daughters and grandsons and granddaughters were going to have a life of any kind, they'd better change a lot faster because that just couldn't continue. Hmm. You know, it's you know it's a, a situation where uh, uh, you have the uh, train stations, and bus stations in the evening, with just hundreds and hundreds of blacks lined up because they were working for uh, uh, people in white areas. Mm -hmm. and they literally could not uh, uh, be there after dark. And as a matter of fact, the last day that I taught in that program, there were like five or six uh, black uh, students, and only one was there, which is unusual, you know, particularly when you're dealing with uh, with managers. There's sure. Some, they must always show up. And so the one guy who was still there, I, after uh, class, I said, well, did I say or do something uh, wrong? Or what is happening? Oh, he said, don't know. He said, this is the last day of, our, of this, this session. And these, uh, uh, these uh, the other men all live in Johannesburg or Pretoria or over in Durban, mm -hmm. and they 
can't be out on the roads at night. Oh. They had to drive during the day. The black man at that time, black man, it was a good car at night going through the Orange Free State. Just it was inviting your hmm. imprisonment or worse. Hmm. So it's it was a, di a very different kind of experience. Beautiful country, lovely yeah. country. Yeah. Uh, right. And I'm glad that they have. Uh, you know, it's been difficult, and there are fits and starts, of course. But I'm glad that they. Have sure. Uh, and of course, the soccer World Cup certainly put them on the map. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's talk about the uh, Crayer School. The deans. Let's see. There was Dr. John Day, and then um, Keith. Uh, uh, Keith Smith. Keith Smith came after. Uh, he came Frank. after. Frank, right, yeah. Came after uh, John. Mm -hmm. Things did not work out all, all that well okay. there. And, uh, uh, well, there, I'm not going to get into uh, say anything more about that than, than oh. that. And uh, then uh, uh, Ron uh -huh. came in. Very good man. Very good man. Did a lot of good, had a lot of good ideas. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Danny did a fine job as uh, as dean. They've had they've had good uh, leadership in the school. Continue to have. Be interested to see who the uh, next dean is going to be. Mm -hmm. That would have been De was Dennis the next dean. Yeah. We know her. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. right. After after Rod. Right. Yeah. Um, how about the enrollment, uh, particularly at the graduate level? You were sort of involved in that. That's increased over time, hasn't it? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, we've wanted to, uh, you know, there is, if you're going to have a national reputation, you have to uh, be uh, uh, producing a fair number of uh, graduates. It just doesn't happen. So we, <clears throat> we really had to grow. We're still, given the, uh, the rank that we have as a school, we're still very small. Mm -hmm. Take a look at uh, most programs are much smaller than, uh, than most uh, uh, Masters or PhD uh, uh, program, mm -hmm. uh, but do you, you know there has to be uh, has to be people around. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, there have right. to be grads that are out doing great things. That's right. Do attract more. How about diversity though? Over time, that's certainly oh, changed. Yeah, right. Yeah. One of the uh, both the. Uh, of course, do you, you know or have you heard of Cornell Bell? Right, I was just going to make a comment. We currently have an exhibit uh, yeah, in our archives. Yeah. Right, well, Cornell, very nice. Cornell and I were, were uh, uh, good friends. Mm -hmm. Cornell did a, a terrific job in terms of attracting uh, uh, talented uh, my school. Uh, again, as an aside, one of the uh, conflicts that uh, was the time. Some of the faculty thought that Cornell was really not bringing people in that needed the uh, help and support, that they were really bright, that we ought to really do, be doing more of getting, uh, bringing people in that we could try to try to turn around or try sure. to improve. Right. Cornell's idea was always that I want I wanted people that are bright and sharp and will we'll, uh, go out and uh, do well for himself. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. But he was he was a good guy. I I really always liked uh, Cornell. And we always had a great. Right. Time. I met him a few times and uh, rankings. Well, one, of, one of the things that might you might be interested. Mm -hmm. in, uh, you know, he was the director of what we call the business opportunity program. Correct. Yes. Bob program. Uh huh. Uh, that got started after. I think I'm right now. I think it was right after Martin Luther uh, King's, King's assassination. Oh, okay. And that would have been '68 uh, then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, the faculty, got, some of the faculty got together, and we decided we just we needed to do something uh, substantial, something tangible. And so we just we kind of developed the general idea of this program, and there were either seven or eight of us that each. Uh, uh, well, we did. We contributed. Uh, oh, it wasn't a lot of money, but uh, a, a fair amount of money at, at the time. Right. The idea being, if, if we could get outside uh, support and outside people interested, uh, we would 
get our money back. Mm -hmm. And if we didn't, uh, it was just the, the contribution that we were making. Dan Chandel was the guy who was really the big uh, uh, prime mover in this in this regard. Dan is just just retired, mm -hmm. and uh, so I say like seven or eight of us that did that, and that's kind of the way we got seed money to start. But fortunately, we had, we did get outside support, so mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was. But at the time, it was a real uh, you know, it was a real commitment and the chance that you were uh, were taking. I was I was pleased that we had. Uh, enough faculty in school who were willing to do that. Sure, and it certainly took off. Yeah. Right, yeah. Rankings, of course, that's a thing, a big thing today, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a, uh, I always said, if you live by the rankings, by the rankings, you die by the rankings. <laughs> they, you know, they tend to go up and they tend to go down. Yeah, that's uh, right, that's right. They Pe tend to stay about the same place. The rankings of the graduate programs at the Granite School are just about are now just about what, what they were when I was associate dean 20 years ago or yeah, okay. or, or, or more. Okay. Let's uh, talk. But it's hard, to, it, but it's a, it's a situation where it's hard to uh, uh, maintain your place because there are always new programs and sure. ideas. That oh, yeah. You can't just stand still. If you're going to stand still, right. you're going to... Uh, very competitive. Oh, very competitive. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Let's talk about family. Do you have children? Four, uh, we have Did any of them go to Purdue? Had, my wife and I had four children. Our okay. oldest child, Laura, died uh, four, a little over four years ago. She oh. had uh, MS and had complications, uh, got really pneumonia for about the third or fourth time and didn't uh, oh, take dear. it. Uh, uh, his, his next, uh, they had three sons. Uh, next son, John, got his uh, master's or got his bachelor's in the Crown School. Uh, Next son, Joe, got his uh, degree at uh, uh, IU, and our youngest son, Jeff, was, got his undergraduate at Wabash and his MBA at uh, Northwestern. Okay. Uh, we have 11 grandchildren and 13 great-grandchildren. Well, that sounds like quite a big family. That sounds one good. Of our, okay. One of our grandchildren also got, has his MBA from uh, the Granite School. Oh, okay. He did very well. I, was <laughs> I told him I was really glad that he did well because people do who he was I thought, oh my gosh I, I hope he does right. well, want to keep the family in good spirits yeah. right right uh, were you ever a faculty fellow professor King at any of the residence halls you recall the faculty fellow program yeah, yeah. okay yes I think I was this okay was a long time ago okay I, I also was a member of what is it Omicron Delta Cal oh okay which is uh, you know a, an honorary an honorary right but I think I was. Okay. But Any I, awards and it honors? Wasn't very, it wasn't very uh, uh, eventful, I guess, or I'd remember it. <laughs> How about awards and honors? Any that you'd like to share with us? Oh. Particular one? I graduated from Purdue with highest uh, distinction. I told you. Okay. I was always, you know, I, people ask me what, what I do best, or what I've done best in my life. I, I, I generally say, well, I think the thing I do best is taking tests. <laughs> I've always been a good test okay. taker. Oh. Uh, and uh, uh, let's see, Any, anything else? Oh, I. I How about you? You're a member of Sigma Psi. Yeah. Right. Okay. And as I say, I'm a member of Homer from Delta Kappa. And okay. And I, I don't know why I was listed in Who's Who in America for a while. Well, that's pretty I'm, good. I don't think I'm listed there. I really don't know how how that happened. But well, that's I think that, it's, it's probably because they wanted to sell uh, uh, copies <laughs> no. of their. Uh, how about a uh, Purdue tradition, a favorite Purdue tradition? Well, I have been gone long enough that I don't know what tr uh, traditions really. Uh, well, uh, some of them are still there, like the Boilermaker Special or yeah, Commencement. Yeah. The thing that uh, I remember when I was, uh, particularly when I was a student, was uh -huh. uh, the senior cords. Oh, yes. Um, you know, the seniors would wear cords and you couldn't wear them before, I guess it was the IU game at least, before some uh, uh, football game where you, everyone would march down, down <laughs> with their cords. Matter of fact, in the uh, 1952 debris, you know, the yearbook, sure. there's a posed picture of two guys tried to take off my end if if you found the cords uh you, you would you would try to uh, 
same way. There's a post picture of two guys uh, ha wrestling me to try to get my uh, senior chorus on. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have an outstanding event? It, uh, uh, well, you can have more than one. Sometimes people. I hate to uh, sound braggy, but there've been a lot of outstanding. Sure, that's good. There've been a lot of outstanding events in my life. Um, I think probably my family. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, my uh, daughter, Laura, uh, after having uh, MS, and this is a tough deal. Uh, finished both her uh, bachelor and her uh, master's degree at Fontbonne uh, University in St. Louis. And one of the things I remember is seeing that she could still walk. And I could see her walk down the, uh, the aisle getting her, uh, her uh, master's degree. That's she very nice. She had four kids and when she had a lot of, she had a lot of physical problems. Mm -hmm. I was really very proud of her. I would think you're, she's more than deserving of it. That's nice. It's a nice thing to have. Um, retirement activities. Well, I well, <laughs> I uh, for a few years, I did, you know I was pretty active in consulting, and I uh, my experience is I think is like most people's. For a few years, I was still uh, doing some consulting of one kind and another, and then I think people just forget about you. <laughs> So I haven't done any anything of that sure. uh, that sort for some time. Of course, How'd I, you, am, huh? I, I, I am eighty. So I uh, I golf. I uh, I read. I'm a uh, uh, Audubon Society member. I I am really I'm kind of the resident bird expert around here. I mean, okay. People ask me, and I give them answers. They don't know whether they're right or, or not. You know? <laughs> How did you happen to decide to go to, do you realize, did you move to Florida then after you retired? or? We had owned a uh, property here since uh, 1978. Oh, okay. It was just a uh, vacation property. And mm -hmm. uh, then uh, in uh, 1993, when I retired, uh -huh. we sold our uh, home in uh, West Lafayette in the fall of 92. And uh, I, uh, then uh, we, moved down here. My wife, Pat, had uh, been living down here. She lived down here uh, that fall. Huh. As a matter of oh. fact, last, the last semester that I taught at Purdue, I lived in the uh, uh, graduate house, the one right close, right by, uh, by the Craner building. Sure. We sold our house. Pat was down here, and so I, I was back at the graduate house. <laughs> <laughs> so we owned up. Uh, uh, we've lived here uh, full time since uh, oh, okay. 1993. Have you visited? Had you have you returned to campus at any time? Oh yeah. Oh okay. Uh, I think the, oh, I go go back. I think the latest time, my uh, most recent visit, may well have been to the uh, to mark the uh, 50th anniversary of the uh, uh, MSI program in okay. the Granite School. Okay. Which is that there are three of us who were uh, around at that time who, uh -huh. who uh, were asked to give a little talk and heard one of them it was very interesting it was very much like the uh, uh, the blind men that are, are describing an elephant <laughs> uh, one fellow was an economist and his uh, uh, talk was largely about the economics and the economics department and, and that is what happened there uh, another fellow was a uh, uh, wouldn't call himself an accountant, a financial controller. Mm -hmm. Still lives in the, uh, and he had talked very much about what he had done in development of the school, and this and that and the other, and uh, it ha had handouts showing what what had happened. And uh, my view, my talk was a little uh, different than that. Three very different talks mm -hmm. uh, about the start of the, uh, the same thing. Oh, sounds like a good program. Uh, if there's anything that I forgot to ask, or I'll leave the closing to you, whatever, uh, something that you'd like to share, if I, something I forgot to ask. No, I don't. I, uh, I uh, really can't think of anything. One, you know, looking at Purdue, uh, there's a lot of, there are a lot of changes. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I'm very pleased that uh, Purdue uh, developed a, uh, a good uh, retirement program. Mm -hmm. They did that after there were uh, four uh, Purdue staff members that were killed. I think in a, I don't know whether it was a uh, automobile uh, wreck or uh, a, uh, uh, a plane crash. This was before I joined the faculty mm. a year, year or two. Okay. At that time, Purdue's benefits, retirement benefits, death benefits, were very meager. Mm. And so you had uh, like four families that were left in, in hmm. pretty sad shape. Yeah. And uh, I think that was one of the turning points for the university really uh, Picking up the ball in terms of what they get. Sure, right. Look, we look at the package and get the benefits. Yeah. Right. Yep. Dr. King, I want to thank you very much for this okay. opportunity. I want to wish you the best of luck and and uh, during the holidays, and we'll keep in touch. I'm going to log. I'm going to disconnect the recorder, but I do want to make a comment to you. Okay.